guys welcome back it's your girl yummy.com thank you for joining me in the new year we're gonna pump this joint off with another tipsy movie review and again I feel like I need to stop calling it a tipsy movie review because I literally only talk about series on this channel um maybe I'll one day talk about movie fingers crossed um, but for now, we are going to talk about the Netflix drama that just dropped, Bridgerton. As you can tell by my outfit, I am Lady Yemi of House.com. Um, but really, I really, really wanted to talk about this as soon as it dropped because I just what I wanted, I just wanted my opinion out there because I'm a long proprietor and watcher, and uh, I have. Uh, bought season passes, if you will, tell me if you get that joke, uh, to Shondaland. Um, please tell me if you get that joke. Okay, I'll explain it. Basically, the reason that she left, like, um, ABC and them is because she asked for, like, a Disney pass, and they were like, don't you already have enough? And she was like, oh, really? Get me out of this contract. Fuck these people. And I really appreciate that, and I admire that greatly. Um, this show is the latest Netflix collab with Shondaland and the first I think of many a great things to come it uh I want to start out by saying that this type of show I think it shocked a lot of people that Shonda would make this type of show but I watch everything Shonda makes and I really appreciate her style in making and with watching everything that uh she makes you might have watched um a show called Still Starcrossed that she also made that had a similar vibe, at least a similar like dress and vibe to it. Two main characters uh, that kind of despise each other a little bit, a little bit of derision, a little bit of love, like a little bit of forced circumstances. So like kind of similar to Still Star Cross, except for that was like a spinoff of Romeo and Juliet. And this is a spinoff of a different piece of literature, Bridgerton. So, I was not surprised to see that Shonda tipped her hat into this. She already probably had did a lot of knowledge and a lot of research based off of that show and had this was the natural progression for that. Um, I like to think that it's a big middle finger to ABC who canceled that show. Um, so, and I'm all for giving the middle finger to the man. Fight the man. Um, but anyways, it was an excellent roller coaster. The story, okay, first of all, spoiler alerts, because I need to talk about the ending to somebody. So if you have not watched the ending, pause this, go watch all eight episodes, come back, and let's talk. Because, wild. The story revolves around, of course, the namesake, Bridgerton. You are a Bridgerton. Bridgerton, Bridgerton, sorry, uh, the Bridgerton family, which has sired a healthy amount of boys for and a healthy amount of girls to be young debutantes. A shockingly prolific family, noted for its bounty of perfectly handsome sons and perfectly beautiful daughters. Oh, I'm already roasting. I can play the entire day, Eloise. Surely I cannot be expected to bear these fashions the entire day. I feel like a princess. Do I look like one? You truly wish to know what I think you look like. On your left! Oh, Red Reed! It's all this is the still not ready. Oh, she's only been reading herself the entire night. You mean her entire life? I shall run upstairs and hasten her along. No, Colin, wait. I'll do it. She likes me much better than you, Benedict. Did you say that? Everyone says that. Oh. It is mostly about the young lady Bridgerton, uh, Daphne, who is fourth in line because they're named alphabet alphabetically, which helps me to remember different characters. But she's fourth in line, basically, and she, it's her debut, her debutante debut, which means it's time for her to go out on the scene and try and find a husband. Um, Across the way is the Feathertons or Feather something or so whatever. They are the other family. Um, they are like just casual, chill with each other, unless you're talking about like uh, Penelope and Eloise and their besties. Um, and they're like very interesting. So the characters, there's a lot of characters floating around, there's a lot of families, but the characters that you need to figure out and you need to pay attention to are Daphne uh, Bridgerton. Flawless, my dear. Uh, 
um not even really her brother you don't really need to pay attention she's really the only one it's the main story is Daphne Bridgerton um the Duke of Hastings Simon and their kind of love story and how that blossoms and how that comes about um they do it in this really cool way where you kind of just see like the first uh, musings of their plan and their love and the how the whole setting unfold in the first episode the first episode feels like it, it's like a movie kind of like because it's just it caps off so well that you just feel like it's a movie of some sort um but it was really good it set the scene perfectly and then the second episode it goes immediately into learning Simon's backstory and what will eventually be the main issue in the tail end of the season so this is where the spoilers start I liked this a lot it, it was very interesting to me to see all the different storylines I feel like um it was it was very gracious and graceful to see all these characters of color as well um they talked about it just for a second like they were like oh like he married one of us so like that's why we're like cool to be in this society um I feel like I feel like I would like that explained a little bit more because I feel like just because a king marries a queen I don't think that would like suddenly give like all the black people lordships I just want that explained a little bit more but um it was really really good I like that they talked about it and they tapped on it because I was confused for a little bit but it's also see good to see a person of color as the queen like a, the the highest standing in the uh in the the land is is this black woman um she also snorts cocaine so modern woman beats love and chicken grease um I guess Anyways, I really, really like the story. I think that it's very interesting. I think all of the different storylines are very interesting. I think where I would have loved it to be explained more and expounded upon more is the, the little, little smaller storylines. Like, um, it very much felt like it was uh, Daphne and Simon's story. It was the story of how they are coming to be and coming together which is beautiful and blossoming and like full of schemes and interest itself but like because they had so many interesting side storylines like the second brother and this like art cult house Benjamin Franklin sex cult-esque kind of place that he was going the oldest brother and his love of the soprano chick who I just really don't know why he was so in love with her she was like barely interesting I don't know why he was so in love with her but like whatever it's on him um the third brother and his uh story of him like Colin courting um this other girl Miss Thompson uh who like becomes a, a ward of the Feathertons or Featherings or whatever and it turns out she's pregnant and like fell in love with this dude who uh, uh, didn't abandon her in the end or whatever all this different stuff there's so many different storylines going around and it feels like we only got true appreciating resolution to one of them which I guess bodes well for the next season but it also like it's the main storyline that got capped off so it's like okay like he's he's spoiler alert he has an aversion to having kids he doesn't want to get married he doesn't want to have kids because he doesn't want to satisfy his dad's like deep-seated need to have an heir um which like he it was like it's my ultimate revenge it, it kind of reminded me of that um adam driver scene from snl where he was like i married your granddaughter <laughs> filled her belly with my festering seed <laughs> HR! That is my greatest revenge to you, HR Pickens! Like, it kind of gave me those vibes with that, uh, but he swore on his dad's deathbed that he would never marry or give children. But, like, also, it, it, part of it is that he feels like he's too broken to, like, decently love someone. And it's, like, this whole deep storyline that's great and beautiful. It gets capped off nicely because, you know, I've never rooted for someone to come inside of someone so fervently you know I'm like just do it just knock her up 
knock her up and he did it and then you see that they have a baby at the end and it's beautiful and I hope they name it Anthony or no her brother's name is Anthony uh Albert no Albert's a bad name Alfred Alfred let's go with Alfred hope they name it Alfred um but yeah that's how I felt and I was like that story capped off nicely it's beautiful it ended beautifully but like there's so many questions that I have left to ask like there's so much more it's like they ended it in a nice place where if there was no season two, for the main couple at the very least, it would be like, okay, it's like they had a happy ending. But there's too many questions for everyone else. Like, Penelope was always my favorite character up until a certain point because she started to get annoyed with her self-righteousness. Look, whatever happened in there, we have to stick together, okay? We have to back each other up. Yes, okay, I was there. I admit that. It was all Michelle. I'm not going down for something I didn't do. If anyone deserves to get punished, it should be Michelle. Well, I think it's safe to say we all just lost a bit of respect for you there, Claire. When you think about it, we've actually got a lot in common because we understand what it's like to be a young person from a troubled place. Mm, it is not the same. Chernobyl was a terrible nuclear accident. You people like to fight each other and to be honest, a person really understands why. Well, there's actually a political element to it, Katya, and there's a religious element. Mm, but you're not two different religions here. You're different flavors of the same religion, no? Well, yes. But it's a little bit more complicated than that, Katya. To me, it's stupid. Oh, my God. It is stupid. It is so, so stupid. It is. No, it's not. But if it was... Aaron! It's me. I'm the wee lesbian. I so you are, Claire. I'm not joking. You're, you're a lesbian. I've never been brave enough to say it out loud before, but I think that's why I wrote this story and then it all got too real, I got too scared, but now, well, you've made me realize it's all okay. Don't blame me. What? You fancy gears? Well, that's sort of an entry-level requirement, Aaron. I think I'm going to book. Do you mind? I'm trying to come out here. Well, don't. Don't come out. Go back in. I don't want to go back in. Well, I'm sorry, Claire, but I'm just not interested in you. Not like that. I'm not interested in you like that look of this stadium. <laughs> oh, come off it. Your arrogance is staggering, Aaron. Well, you know what else is staggering? Your gayness. I really thought you'd understand. But then when I found out, spoiler, big spoiler alert, big spoiler alert, she ends up being this Gossip Girl-esque character that I haven't talked about yet. Um, basically, this is all narrated and kind of seen through the eyes of this um, Gossip Girl character that just spills all the tea as if it was her livelihood, which I guess it is. Um, she writes about all society's secrets, she knows all, she gets tips, she, she, she spills all the information. Perhaps I will come forward one day. Though you must know, dear reader, that decision shall be left entirely up to me. Yours truly, Lady Whistledown. Her name is Lady Whistledown and she just spills all the tea. That's basically her job. And we find out the very last second at the very end of the season one that Penelope, who is one of the three sisters um, of the Featherdown family, Feather something, Featherton, Featherton, Featherton family is the one and she's also Eloise's best friend. How did she become a child if she's not married? I do not know. I will find out. You must. Otherwise, how can we make sure it never happens to us? We have accomplishments to acquire. And Eloise has been like, um, trying to figure out who Lady Whistledown is this whole time. Whistledown is a woman. Therefore, she has nothing. And still, she writes. You're a man, therefore you have everything. You are able to do whatever you want. So do it. It's just this wild goose chase. But it's a kind of this big shock that it's her. I was kind of like guessing maybe it was her when um, the pregnant girl's secret got out. If you don't know, now you know. Um, but yeah, so basically it's this 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 18th century, 18th, 17th, 
19th, because it's in the 1800s, 19th century uh, story of in London and its uh, regency and the regalness and you have all this air of like, oh, they still drink lead, uh, they wear crowns, this is amazing, but also terrifying. Must our only options be to squawk and settle or to never leave the nest? What if I want to fly? But also it, you feel the anxiety of so many of these situations as well. It's the first show I've ever watched that actually made me feel for a widow. Like, usually widows are, like, widowed by, like, circumstance. Like, widows, especially when you're a widow, when the show starts, like, it doesn't, like, they'll be like, I miss your dad, you know, sometimes. But, like, I really felt for Mrs. Uh, Lady Bridgerton uh, and her loss for her husband, especially that last episode where she was talking about how the last time she danced it was with him. And it was, like, just so interesting. I've, uh, I've never felt for a widow before, but I felt for her. And it was, like, beautiful. Um, a lot of the characters were very interesting. A lot of the characters were very plain. I think they made the characters that needed to stand out stand out, but it's just not the character, all the characters that like had rich and colorful backstories. Um, like Colin, for instance. Colin, all I know about Colin is that he wanted to travel and he's dumb enough to try and marry a knocked up girl. Like, I, there's no color to him, no pizzazz, especially seeing as he is the crush, long standing crush of one of our main characters, Penelope, aka Lady Whistledown. So it's like, I, yay, you like toasted white bread. Like, he's not that interesting. Even Anthony, I believe Anthony is their oldest brother's name, wasn't that interesting. Like, he was like, it's just, it'd be literally like, he, all he knows is drinking violence and making bad decisions on uh, the the behalf of his family like that seems like all he knows because it's all he did the entire season you know like the women the women were so well written um and so interesting and complex your grace welcome to my den of iniquity it must be taxing what the game of pretend that you feel you must endlessly maintain I know we could not be any more different, but there is one thing we do share. The certainty that you will make your own way in this world. I'm sure of it, Eloise. How does a lady come to be with child? Uh, Eloise, what a question. I thought one needed to be married. Whatever are you talking about? <laughs> Apparently it's not even a requirement. Eloise, that is more than enough. Uh, I take it the two of you? No? Do not look at me. Have you ever visited a farm? Yeah. Oh! But like the men were kind of like, unless it was Simon, the men were kind of like not great. They were like literally blank sheets of paper for the women to throw their color at, you know? Which is interesting because that's kind of a juxtaposition of what the times were like at that time, where it was like men were like these colorful creatures and then uh, women were just like their ornaments. So it's kind of interesting that that, has reversed. Maybe that was the point. Hmm. Shonda, are you trying to teach me a lesson? Oh my god. Awesome. But I just think it was very interesting. I think that was very uh, great. I don't think that... Okay, Shonda, the thing about it, as I'm, go I'm going to rate it now after I've given all my opinions and backstory. The thing about it is that I long have loved Shonda's work and I think that part of me is jaded like, I love the characters. They're very interesting. The stories are good. But, like, and the writing is, is, is also well done. I don't think it's my favorite writing because, like, it's, I think because it's Shonda, and I know it's Shonda, that's kind of, like, tainting the color of it for me. Because, like, Shonda is known to have, like, these lengthy monologues, these great speeches that well up inside of you, especially if you're a woman, especially if you're a woman of color, these like beautiful lengthy speeches. You think Quinn and I are BFFs forever? And I'll let that cloud my judgment or that mini Quinn she's carrying is a little person I'm already in love with, so I just can't handle the idea of both of them dying. You think there's a soft, chewy center in here. You do think that. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. You gave me a dead mother 
a life in boarding school. Then you told me everything I knew was a lie. You took away the only man I ever truly loved. You killed his son. You consistently erased my hopes, mm. my dreams, my ambitions. You taught me the only constant worth holding on to is the Republic. You made me in your own image. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Poison, though it may be. Remember that? I am just as you made me. That ray of light you think I am isn't a warm campfire, Dad. It's a blowtorch. So why would you think I would choose Quinn over the Republic? Where you went wrong? Oh. Leviticus. Thou shalt not lie with a man as one oh, lies with a female. Do that, it Daddy. Is don't quote the Bible at me. The outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and the, the sin is exceedingly great. Oh, Carlos, this is not what we. Jesus, a new commandment that I give unto you, that you love one another. Romans, but we know Jesus, that the Lord. Jesus, he who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. So you admitted to sin. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Jesus, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Jesus, blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is my savior, daddy, not you. And Jesus would be ashamed of you for judging me. He would be ashamed of you for turning your back on me. He would be ashamed. Some may claim that slavery has ended, but tell that to the inmates who are kept in cages and told that they don't have any rights at all. People like my client Nathaniel Leahy and millions of people like him who are relegated to a subclass of human existence in our prisons. There is no alternative to justice in this case. There is no other option. To decide against my plaintiff is to choose lining the pockets of prison owners over providing basic defense for the people who live in them. And is that the America that this court really wants to live in? Where money is more important than humanity? Where criminality is confused with mental health? The Sixth Amendment was ratified in 1791. It's been 226 years since then. Let's finally guarantee its rights to all of our citizens. Or like just short things like whether it's like a scandal. You want me? Earn me. How can I satisfy you today? Like when she was like, am I your buffer now? Like, like scandal that like, uh, she always had great like boom, boom, booms. And, and the same thing with How to Get Away with Murder. It's just great boom, boom, booms. The same thing even with Still Starcross or Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy is the most quotable show on TV. I did nothing to you. I lost my husband and the father of my children and you're falling apart. I don't get to do that because I have three kids. So please shut up and get out of my room. Nice. Get her out of here before I kill her. That great dialogue of just like boom, 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 like quotable, gifable, snatchable moments from her. Um, so I think that, and then also the fact that I seen a similar show that she's made that had a similar ish presence. Um, and like I think that I'm so in love. I've like that it's it's like when your when your idol dies too soon. Like when Aaliyah passed away. Like it's it's that feeling. It's like that show was canceled unjustly too early. So I will always idolize it in my mind. And anything that like tries to come after it is just going to have a tough time um comparing and living up to it, which is not its fault, but like it's the truth. <laughs> All of you at one table, even the children. I realize it may be unfashionable, but we like each other <laughs> most of the time. You should join us more often, Your Grace. Do you know what is an accomplishment? <laughs> Attending university. If I were a man, I could do that, you know. Instead, I shall have to stand by and watch dear Mama appear proud because some man should like to admire my sister's face and hair and fill her up with babies. Patience, 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 I ain't got time Just going through the motions You tell me what I wanna hear But never what you're feeling Keep me in the dark but I've had enough I don't want forever Now you're bugging, super snoop, chill up on my crew, that's my cousin 
time But if you got so much time, make a check And if you got so much time, give me back Give me back all the time I wasted Cause under this dress, it's a secret Better hold tight, can you keep it? Uh-uh, rev it up, rev it up, take control Twiddle your thumbs with somebody else Now you look dumb, 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 dumb Enough to think there's nobody else I do it forever and innocent. This is what they have been raised and trained for since birth. Tonight we shall discover which young ladies might succeed at securing a match, thereby avoiding the dreadful, dismal condition known as the spinster. Oh, I do love Sita. So, I guess with that being said, I'm going to have to rate it as an alcohol drink, a daiquiri. Um, because it's classic, it's simple, it has the great ingredients, the little Shonda Spice in it. But it's just like, also elegant and fierce. It, like, it also will get you drunk. We'll get the job done, we'll get you drunk. But like, also elegant. Um... It's sneaky. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'm glad you joined me. My name is Yemi.com. Don't worry, I will be back, so stay tuned.